the first Homo sapiens in East Asia first migrated from Southeast Asia to the Yellow River at around 30,000 years ago. A later stage, the migration was from China to Southeast Asia. In the period of Mid Stone Age, about 10,000 years ago, a part of a great Asian strain living in Tibetan areas migrated to the southeast to the region nowadays called Indochina. Here part of the great Asian strain in the combination with part of the great Australian strain results the presence of the ancient Malay strain. Then the ancient Malay strain from Indochina gradually had spread throughout the Yangtze River to the north, India to the west, islands of Indonesia to the south, and Philippines to the east. End of the Neolithic, Early Bronze Age, about 5,000 years ago, the ancient Malay strain had an frequent exposure with the great Asian strain from the north in the region nowadays called the north of Vietnam and the south of China from, from the Yangtze River coming down, leading the formation of a new strain, South Asia. After that period, the South Asian strain was divided into a series of people that the Vietnamese and Chinese writings called Yue, Viet, or Ba Yue, Bat Viet. Initially, they communicated with each other with some of their own languages, Austro-Asiatic, such as Mon Khmer, Viet Mong, Austronesian, such as Thai Kadai, Thai Nung or Zhuang, Zhao Mao or Mao. Time after time, this splitting process continued to form ethnic groups and languages seen today. Recent archaeological evidence excavated at Humudu, a site in northern Zhejiang province, south of Shanghai, suggests that if we were to step back in time to the 5th millennium BC in southern China, we would find people cultivating wet rice, raising water buffalo, and living in houses perched high on stilt posts. Culturally, these people differed radically from the millet-growing pit dwellers found in the Yellow River Valley region. Their discovery has raised new and important questions regarding the development of culture and civilization in southern China. At long last, Chinese archaeologists have begun to reinterpret the developments of early civilization in southern China. In so doing, they have emphasized the emergence of a southern cultural complex, which they call Yue. The Yue culture, as defined by Chinese archaeologists, spans both the Neolithic and early state period. As more and more archaeological data are retrieved from southern China, Chinese archaeologists are asking the question, who were the people who created this Yue culture? Were they ethnically different from the people who lived in northern China? What language or languages did they speak? One favorite theory at the moment is that the Yue people were ancestral to the various Thai-speaking populations, the Thai Lue, Thai Niu, Tong, Shui, Bu Yi, and the Zhuang, living today primarily in southwestern China. In late Shang times, Yue seems to have been used to refer to people in northwest China, but by late warring states to Han times, it was more generally used to indicate the partly or uncinicized people of southern China who belongs to different ethnic and linguistic groups, and that to the Sinaitics at the time thought that these people had no political or cultural unity. Since historical, archaeological, and anthropological evidence indicates considerable cultural continuity in South China from prehistoric populations to those of today, the term Yue still has some use as a broad reference to the people and cultures of this region back into the first millennium BC. For certain, the Yue people does not refer to any one single ethnic group 
and is actually multicultural and multi-ethnic. The translation of the term Yue has always been changing over the course of time, from territory to territory throughout the ancient history of East Asia. The term Yue was also referred to by ancient Chinese scholars to the entire so-called uncinicized population. These labels and observations were often misinterpreted and misunderstood by the contradicting views of these Chinese scholars. Common traits such as tattooing, short cropped hair, fighting abilities, adaptation to water environment, totem worship, living in raised huts on bamboo stilts and bamboo groves with neither towns nor villages, possessing neither bows or arrows, nor horses or chariots. All ancient Yue people and the people who was influenced by ancient Yue people's culture have these characteristics in some form or another, but there has always been a lot of changes in the area for a long period of time. You can find similar customs in those people who now live in the Pacific Islands, Madagascar, and regions in the Southeast Asia. Ancient Yue people had very wide distribution, and they had many branches. They lived in Jiangsu, Zhejiang, Fujian, Jiangxi, Guangdong, Guangxi, Hunan, Guizhou provinces of China, Vietnam, and in the countries of Southeast Asia today. It can be very possible that the ancient Yue was living next to the Central Plains people of China, and they could have intermarriage with each other before and during the developments of Chinese civilization. The term Yue is varied by dynasties, but in the broader terms, it is an umbrella term to label any tribe, ethnic group, such as the ancestor of ethnic minorities south of the Yangtze. If the American Indians were the original indigenous of the Americas, then one should conclude with all the historical evidence that the Yue was the original indigenous of East Asia.